Hello, welcome back to Fragmental. It feels like a little while since I've been sat in this set, so it's good to be back. Thank you for joining me. All right, in this video, I'm going to tell you about five fragrances that I think are the best releases of 2021. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm just going to start by saying that I don't think these five fragrances that I'm about to talk about are the only good releases of 2021. I think there's been some fantastic releases, but I'd probably say that the ones I'm going to talk about in this video probably surprised me the most, and I think they are all fantastic. We've got four designers, one niche. Okay, so let's dive in. The first one I'm going to talk about is Stronger With You Absolutely. This is a really nice oriental style fragrance so there's some sweet vanilla in here it's got a bit of that chestnut that is one of the prominent notes in the stronger with you line but i'd say it's a little more versatile than intensely i really love intensely i think this is just a little lighter and a little easier to wear and also it's got a gorgeously smooth rum note and i'm a sucker for a boozy note in fragrances and this one does the rum really nicely as far as a designer fragrance can do but it's there it's smooth it smells good Aaron Terrence Hughes rated this fragrance a 9 out of 10 on my channel, which is high praise indeed. I would probably rate it similar. I think this is probably a 9 out of 10 fragrance. I think it's a great release this year. As we're going into cooler months over the next few weeks, I think this one will really come into its own. I mean, it's pretty versatile. I could probably wear this most of the year. But I do think it has a note breakdown that will really settle into the autumn and the winter really well. So I am really looking forward to wearing Stronger With You. Absolutely very impressed with this release. With it just being another flanker, I wasn't sure if it was just going to be another sort of boring take on the Stronger With You DNA. But it's not. It's very good. And I recommend it. All right, next one is Spice Bomb Infra. Red. So I wasn't very impressed with the Night Vision line because they moved away from the spice bomby type of smell and did something a little bit different, a little more generic and not quite as interesting to me. But Infrared has brought the Spice Bomb DNA back because it takes that original profile of Spice Bomb and it adds a little more depth. Uh, it's a little more sensual and it's fruitier as well. And I'd probably say it's more rounded. So you get all that plus the Spice Bomb DNA. It's definitely in here. It is very recognizable. It's very mass appealing as you would expect from anything in this line, but it's quite diffusive as well. Even though I described it as being a little darker and deeper and sensual, it's still got the projection of the original Spice Bomb, which I think is great. Not massively unique, but it does the sweet, spicy, mass appealing thing really well. And unlike the Night Vision flankers, this one slam dunks that Spice Bomb DNA. So apart from the annoying rattly thing on the atomizer, great release. The next one I'm going to talk about is Zaro The Most Wanted. This surprised me because I am a massive fan of Wanted by Night. And I was thinking, can they really get that Wanted line any better than Wanted by Night was? I thought it was pretty much a perfect designer fragrance. I loved it anyway. Well, the most Wanted surprised me because it sort of takes a bit of that Wanted DNA, throws in maybe a little bit of the Stronger With You type of smell, adds a lot of general fruitiness, and the result is something that is really nice to wear. I think it's very mass appealing. I don't think it's boring. Yeah, I've smelt things, I guess, similar to this before, but what it's doing, I think it does really well. Despite the fact it's not massively unique, I've really been enjoying this fragrance. So what it sets out to do, I think it does really well. Not reinventing the wheel by any stretch of the imagination, but I've really been enjoying it. I wore this for the gym one day and it got a bit of attention. The staff at the gym tracked me down following my CR's trail and said, Chris, what are you wearing? Because I want to buy it. I want that for my nights out because I think that will probably attract some attention. Um, that's you know, why a lot of people wear fragrances. They want to attract attention. And these guys thought it would do just that. So they loved it. I love it. Who knew it would work as a gym scent? All right, moving on to another designer fragrance. This is the new release from Yves Saint Laurent. This is La Nuit de L'Homme Blue Electric. Now, I'm not familiar with O Electric. I think I may have tried it in a store once, maybe 
can't remember. So I'm not familiar with it, but I'd heard a little bit of buzz that this fragrance was as good as vintage La Nuit de L'Homme. So the current formulation of La Nuit de L'Homme is known to be really nice smelling, but not have the performance of more vintage batches. And the word on the streets was that this one does have that performance, and I can confirm that this seems to match the performance of my decant of 2011 Le Nuit that I have, and I feel I get a better performance than the current formulation. So for me, I'm really happy with the performance. It's got that really lovely, sweet, spicy, warming DNA. The cardamom, I think, is a very prominent note in this, and it really pops in a very, very satisfying way. I think this fragrance and the original La Nuit and the Dior Online are probably about as good and as classy as designer fragrances for men go. All right, it's a good one. The last fragrance I'm going to talk about, this is a niche fragrance, but we're not talking silly niche prices, so don't stop the video because I think it's well worth considering this one. So there's a new brand that I've just discovered called Matière Libre. Uh, I tried the line and I enjoyed them. The quality is fantastic. Two of them in particular stood out for me. This one and one called Absinthe Gayak, which I'll probably talk in another video further down the line because I feel like I want to tell you about that one as well. This one is called Patchouli Fig. You get that light, refreshing fruitiness that fig brings to the party. You get a bit of creaminess from fig milk. And then you get the patchouli. And the patchouli in here to me is one of those lovely earthy, chocolatey types of patchouli. So all those things combined just create this really gorgeously balanced, fantastic smelling fragrance. If you enjoy the chocolate patchouli aspect of Tom Ford's Black Orchid, but you feel like maybe there's too many florals in there, maybe it leans a little too feminine for you if you're a guy. For me personally, I love it, but I've heard a lot of guys say nah, it's just a little bit too floral. I would definitely recommend trying this because it's got that nice chocolatey patchouli, but I think it maybe just leans a little more masculine. It's definitely not as floral smelling as that fragrance. It's a unisex fragrance, but I think if you've got a problem with Black Orchid being a bit too floral, definitely recommend trying this one. Performance is stunning on this. The quality and the performance are some of the things I love most about it because for a fragrance that isn't rich and deep and dark, it lasts a long time. It projects a long time as well. So I've really been impressed with the performance. One of the best things about this fragrance and why I wanted to bring it to your attention is I think it's superb value because with current conversions, it works out around 92 pounds for 100 mil. So for a high quality niche fragrance, 92 pounds, 100 mil, free shipping if you buy a bottle. They offer discovery sets as well if you wanted to try out the line first, but if you buy a bottle, I believe the shipping is free. So I think that's great value. I've really been loving this fragrance. I'm gonna love wearing it through the autumn. I'm gonna love wearing it through the winter and into the summer and spring. For me, this is a, a year round fragrance. It's quite unique as well. I think it's gonna command attention. It's gonna get the right amount of attention as well. I think it's just a, a mass appealing fragrance, but, it smells unique and I think it will get interest because it is so unique and it doesn't smell like a lot of other designer fragrances out there. So, Patchouli Fig from Matia Libre. Maybe a little bit harder to find than the other ones I've talked about in this video, so I will leave a link to it in the description below the video. There you go, five superb 2021 releases. Each one of these has impressed me and surprised me, all for different reasons, but I think they're great. And if you can try these, then I would highly recommend them. What have you tried in 2021 that has been a new release that you've enjoyed? Uh, please let us know because everyone watching the video would love to hear your recommendation, and I would too, because if I haven't tried it, I will definitely get out there and try anything that you guys recommend for me. Always uh, love discovering new things, don't we all? That's why we're in this passion, this hobby together. Okay, so five great fragrances. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.